So where to talk? You know what's good. So you say you're nervous? I'm very nervous. Why? Because I don't do this. I'm not a famous like person. That. I'm very famous. I'm not a famous oh, person. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Introduce yourself. I'm Lala. Yeah. Lala is one of the most interesting people that I know. It's a good mother. I wanted to have her perspective of being a woman in America uh, and having children and raising her children. So, now, what's off limits as far as questioning goes? I don't think too much is off limits. Oh, I can ask you anything? Yeah, we know each other, so. Oh, really? You sure? Yeah. I can ask you anything? Ah, whatever. Yeah. Hey, you you don't want me to ask me anything. I mean, so, all right. Um, okay. Given the climate of how children are raised today and being entitled, how do you feel about children today being entitled and feel like they have to, their parents have to do everything for them? Well, based off experience, my children are definitely entitled. Really? Definitely entitled. <laughs> Why you say that? Because they expect it. Like, new cell phones. Cell phones come out. New cell phones. New hair. Like, new shoes. Waiting in line for stuff. It's just like... Because you do it they all? Know, huh? You do it? I do it all because they know that that's how I am when it comes to me. Oh, so it's kind of like right. the way I treat myself. <laughs> it kind of spills over to them. So they expect it. Yeah. To the point where it's kind of like sometimes there's no thank you. I'm like, say thank you. I'm like, oh, thank you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it turns into. So not how you, really I mean, so how, you feel, how you feel about that? How I you feel like about it? You know I don't like, like it because it's a lot of pressure. Because if I don't do it, you get a beat. You know. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't do it, I got feel bad. And then it's kind of like, I don't want them mad at me, so I had to do it. Yeah. I don't want them talking to me. I don't want them yeah. mad at me. So I, I got. I got to make it. I got to make it work. They can't feel children. Their children have mastered the art of making people feel bad, Basically. especially Basically. these older uh, us as older Basically. parents. They make us feel bad. Oh, my mom's gonna get this. But I always felt like nowadays, children nowadays, they don't have it hard. Yeah. It's so easy for them. But why do you think they? Why do you think these kids are so depressed now, though? If it's so easy know. for them. I, like I have one daughter, she I don't want to say she's always depressed, but she's always like in her feelings. I'm like, yeah. life is good. Like, what you mean? Like, all you gotta I do can't is worry do about this. Like, that all, type of like all you gotta do is worry about school and your extracurricular activities. And yeah. like, what is the problem? And she's like always like, like obsessing over stuff. I'm like, just chill, chill. And so when you know. when you say obsessing, like, what do you mean by obsessing? Like, with what, what's obsessing like? So if if she don't get something right away, she's upset about it. Like this new shoe come out tomorrow, and I need it. Well, I have one sneakerhead daughter, and then yeah. I have one that has to have stuff before other people has it. Oh, because she has a lot of white friends. Ooh. She don't have too many black friends, so she it's it's not really keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, because they actually envy her. Like, yeah. oh my God, JL, you have this. Oh, you're here. Oh, you're there. Because yeah. she'd be on yeah. the lives and the TikToks, and she got new shoes, and she got her room always changing, and like, yeah. like I don't know. So she's kind of like living up to this, yeah. like this this person, and it's just like sometimes it's stressful on her because yeah. it's too much. How you and feel? She, how you feel about that climate though? Like kids feel like they have to keep up with other kids. I mean, I know when we was growing up that happened, but. It's a little bit different now, because now you feel like you have to keep up with people you don't even know. For the most part, and my daughter, that's thirteen, she got a lot of people. Not say envy her, but they copy. Yeah. And that makes her like completely upset. I'm like, well, stop telling people your ideas. Like, yeah. like, oh, mom, when I get my nails done, I gotta have orange. Oh, I told my friend, and she's my best friend. I told her that I wanted orange, and she yeah. went out and got orange first. So now I gotta pick another color. She like, <laughs> she's like crazy over it like yeah. took an attitude all day because of yeah. it and it's just like it's not that but you know the, crazy. The, the, the crazy part about it is a lot of times like I I feel like that sometimes like if I tell somebody an idea it's kind of hard 
not to, but I'll put it like this. Everybody nowadays kind of do the same thing. So it's not like people stealing your ideas. Like, you might come up with something. If it's not groundbreaking, then nine times out of ten, somebody else thought about it. I mean, probably ten other people thought about it. Like, oh, I'm going to turn, I'm going to color my car purple. How many people do you think thought about color But you got to put your own purple? spin on it. That's what makes you, like, original. But how do you do that? How do you put your own spin on things nowadays when everything is so obtainable? Like, you literally, like, I put it to you like this, right? Here's your own spin. Your own spin is creating something, right? Mm -hmm. That would be your own spin. But most people don't create nothing. What they do is they go online look for templates. So now yeah, yeah. you got 10 people. They said, oh, these are free because everybody wants everything free. So now they go in there, they grab the template. Somebody in California got the same template, just a different color mm -hmm. that you got. So now you bring your, you put your car out with the template on the front with the, uh, the, the logo on the front. Somebody inbox you like, yo, I got that same logo. You know how it is with music. They do the same thing. They got beats on there for free. I mean, people, a hot mm. beat, everybody uses. So yeah. it's hard unless you literally get somebody to create something for you. And nine times out of ten, they even use stuff something that's else. free. Mm -hmm. Like even websites. Like mm -hmm. people build websites. They be like, oh, oh what website? Uh, oh, I could build your website. And they go build it off of uh, websites.com or something like that for free. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now... You got the same website I got, the same design I got, because it's all a template. That's what people do. So I can understand, but she got... to have that mindset. Yeah. If you know that somebody's going to yeah. copy, you got to already know, like, once you do it, you got to change it. Something, yeah. something got to be different. Like, something got to change. And yeah. I try to explain that to her. Sometimes she's stressed over it. Sometimes if she do it first, she can care less who copies, but she yeah. just don't want them to do it first. Yeah. Kids, kids don't I'm have that... Them. Kids don't have that mentality anymore, you know? Like, they don't have that mentality like we did. Because we was a little bit, we was more go-getters nowadays. You got kids are like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But that's me. Like That's you? Like, I don't like the term when they be like, oh, I got it out the mud. And my kids is going to get it out the mud. Yeah. Like, I don't want... You don't want your kids to get it out the mud. I'm so emotional. <laughs> like, I don't want... <laughs> like, I don't want... Oh, my gosh. Like, I don't want it to be hard yeah. but I know eventually something gotta be hard because they gotta deal with life yeah. but if they gonna know how to handle it just because they're not going through each thing hard that doesn't yeah. mean they're not gonna know how to handle it when they're faced with it you know yeah, what I mean yeah, no. like, I don't want like I don't want it to be hard I don't want to I, I want to be I like mean, you do it yourself and then yeah. like no I mean you gotta you gotta you have to let them we raising a generation of whiny babies you yeah. have to let them fall. Yeah. This I notice about mm -hmm. black women, especially black mothers, single black mothers. Y'all never let y'all kids hit the ground. Why? Why would you want to? Oh because my they God. have to hit the ground. <laughs> no. You have to let them experience what it's like to get it from the mud. No. No. <laughs> you do. You don't think so? If they How fall are they by ever accident, gonna learn? Then, How are they ever yeah. gonna learn? If you if you pampering your kids from 12, I would say from, I don't know, from, I don't know, when they realize that you're pampering them from 6 all the way to 29, what do you think they're going to do? They're not going to, they're going to find, they're going to try to find somebody just like you. They ain't going to find nobody that's, and, and soon they get in a relationship with somebody and don't get what they want, they're going to be out. You don't think so? You don't think that, you think your kids no, should uh, be pampered? No. I don't think that they would expect their mom out of people. I just what? Think that, no. <laughs> you like don't my think son, so? my oldest son is twenty two and he's yeah. such a mama's boy. Like it, yeah. oh my gosh, he's such a mama's boy. Yeah. Like I still like do stuff for him. Yeah. Insurance like his car insurance is, is a fee. Like, hey, you gotta remember, you gotta you know what I mean? Like, do you have lunch today for work? That's what I said today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Lisa, yeah, mom, but, I got lunch. Or he'd be like, no, I'm like, all right, I'll cash at you. You know what I mean? Like, oh but, my God. Like, so what? But you, <laughs> you, you know how I am. But I'm saying, why, why is like you, you just over, uh, you care too much. I do. And I do. it's bad to say that. It's bad to say that as, as a man to a woman. I think women they care too much about their kids and 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 that sound crazy but i have an ex explanation for it but it don't sound crazy i think that y'all have to let them 
learn on your own. You have to. But why? If you know that they're going to make a bad decision, you can't you still give your input and try to enforce it? Like okay, so you can warn them, but they have to learn. They have to taste defeat. If you don't let them taste defeat, and they constantly go through life thinking it's all about wins, when they do taste defeat, early later on in their life, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be probably really bad for them. So you've got to let them taste the feet. You know, I know you're not going to do it. But. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I hear you. No, but, yeah, I mean, you listen to me, but you ain't going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you have to let them taste the feet. Yeah. You do. You can't be like, you can't, you can't bail them out every time. But your kid's not bad, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of things that I do is because they're so great. Like, yeah, they're, they're good they're, kids. Like, they get honor roll. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Two in college. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, I wake up, I'm like, oh, my God, what I can get? What can I get? What can I get? Yeah. Oh, she's going to love this. Oh, he's yeah. going. You know what I mean? Like, so you, so you, your kids are very much solidified. They listen. They're good kids. Mm -hmm. They're not, mm -hmm. you're not, you're not using items and things that you buy for them to persuade them to be good. Yeah. They're already yeah. just good. Mm -hmm. And then you're just rewarding them. Yeah. Now it's not necessarily you, you're rewarding them for bad behavior. Cause exactly. you get a lot of, exactly. you get a lot of parents yeah. who do that, who their kids would be, their kids would be, uh, I don't know, fucking up in school. And they said, well, maybe we need to do something more for them. Yeah. And they end up going buy him a car. Yeah. He crashed a car. And then, I don't give a fuck about their car. I never cared about their car anyway. Yeah, you know what I mean? They're like, well, I'll get you another one. I ain't like the color. Oh, you, what color you like? You like the red? Yeah. Okay, well, let's go get him a red car. Like, I understand that whole dynamic. But your kids, you're saying your kids are good. And they deserve it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it also comes a time where they could deserve it and they could be good, but they're going to feel like you have to do it now. I kind of feel like that's the, the stage where I'm at, where they feel like I have to do it, or I don't think they or feel... Else. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they feel as though I have to do it. Yeah. They feel as though they know I'm going to do it. Oh, you know what I mean? Like out. they'll give me like little hints, like yeah. mom, you know, um, the new Jordans come out on the thirteenth, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So that's yeah. basically yeah. they know I I'm, those here. I'm, I'm getting them. No matter if I got to get it from Flight Cup, which yeah, yeah, we yeah. usually get it for like five hundred dollars. Like what? that's usually what happens. You know what I mean? It's kind of no. like. <laughs> Wait, so you buy? Always... Hold up, no, we can't skip over that. <laughs> Hold up, you buy five hundred dollars sneakers for your kids? And me, You're so nuts. it's kind of like that's the way we all are. So it's like I can't really fault them because that's what I do for myself. Scale you know that back. I mean? so you, you, like, you, yo, yo, I hate to say this, we bougie, yo. But you already knew that. <laughs> yo, are you kidding me? I don't mean to be like. What do you mean? What do you mean? I don't mean to be. You didn't have things when you were growing up. I did, and I think oh, I, so I'm it's not generational. The type, it's a generational bouginess. No, like I don't think that it's kind of like you know everybody. They, oh, everybody got a sad story when yeah, they were yeah. growing up. Oh, that's why I want my kids to have it because I ain't never had it. I yeah. had everything I wanted. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the was stuff that was kid? out then. You know what I mean? Was I, was good, I, was yeah, I was great. I was great. I was great. I was good to school. I didn't go out. I was like hanging yeah. out, sneaking out the window, like. Really? And I had both parents. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of like whatever I wanted. I was spoiled, so whatever I wanted, I got according yeah. to yeah. what was out back then. You know, cell phones and all that stuff wasn't out, but whatever it was, yeah. I got it. And it's like, I think my mom, more so because we like moved to a white neighborhood, she was the one yeah. that was trying to keep me up with the Joneses, making yeah. sure that no one talked about me. Yeah. I had just as yeah. better stuff as them, and yeah. or better, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, that's how I was raised. So when I have my kids, yeah. I'm already like that. How so you it's kind of like it spills how over to them. How you feel about uh, being raised around white people? I actually love it. <laughs> oh, that's going to burn some like, That's going to burn some people up. Like, <laughs> I don't know. And I think that I like it more more so because my older daughter, who's 20 now, she's yeah. in, um, she got two more years of college. Yeah. She had it rough around, yeah. like, black people. Oh, shit. Like, she did. Like, because yeah. she's dark-skinned. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, she's darker than me. They and it's kind of like... Blackie? Like, I don't know what they call it, but she just didn't fit in. Yeah. And, like, she went to um, Delaware State at yeah. first, and it was, like, an all-black college, and she still didn't fit in. Yeah. And it's kind of like she always felt that white people were always so nice to her. 
and like yeah. she really felt comfortable, which yeah. sounds crazy. She feels comfortable yeah. more around like white people than black people. They just like, like, oh, you got weave, like you do too, yeah, like you know yeah. what I mean, like. Well, I want to say this about black black people. I think that black people are more, uh, they're more, they're more. Uh, uh, they put they put a lot of walls up, so no matter who you are, they put these walls up, and then you gotta kind of break them down or kind of get through them. Mm-hmm. White people are different. White people are like this. They they pretend like they have this wall open mm-hmm. for you, mm-hmm. and not all of them because I know some good white people, mm-hmm. but they pretend that they have this wall open for you, and they smile at you. Oh yeah, but they really don't like you. Yeah, and I get and I get that. I get that both sides when it comes to children. I would say now is different, but we were when we were growing up. I lived in I lived in the projects. I ain't see no white people, yeah. not one. And then when they do, they was either fiends or running through the projects, or somebody was chasing them. Mm-hmm. I lived around nothing but black people. Mm-hmm. So when I finally got, so when I moved from Jersey City to Newark, and I seen a vast difference of, of a black family going from the projects to a black family going to the house. Mm-hmm. Even though it's black people living around, I seen that black people can actually own homes. Because I thought that when I was growing up, that black people couldn't own the house. I thought we had to live in projects. Because yeah. that's what it was taught. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And as I got older, I realized that it's different. Once I start traveling and I start seeing, I, my whole mind state changed. And I think a lot of the reasons why a lot of these kids are the way they are is because they're stuck where they're at. They're stuck in the hood. And I don't want to say they're stuck. They won't leave the hood. Mm-hmm. The hood has everything. Liquor, beer, drugs, girls, babies, fights, mm-hmm. guns, uh, good times, parties, mm-hmm. good food. It has everything they need. So they feel like, well, why the hell am I going to leave here when I can just here? So I understand where you're coming from when it comes to that. I understand that. And it's just her that felt that way. And yeah. my other kids, they can be around, like, anybody, you know what I mean, and yeah. feel great, have, like, they never fought in school. Like, they didn't have enemies, like, that crazy to where yeah, they yeah. had to fight. Like, mainly, the only time my oldest son got in trouble is because he was sticking up for someone who someone else was picking on, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of like they don't really have issues when it comes to different like races it was yeah. just that it was just my oldest daughter that always like had issues like yeah. she she hated it you know what i mean you feel like do you feel like your connect your kids are connected to a different world than we are what i mean by that is do you feel like they live on social media and we don't i definitely feel as though they live on social media like my oldest he's into music so he yeah. has like millions of followers like yeah. he got he's into he got so millions of followers yeah. hold on you should that nigga here yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you should have brought him here. You, you definitely should. <laughs> yeah, bring yeah. him here. Like, I'm so serious. Like you have millions yeah. of followers. No, you gotta um, bring him here. I need to get Because he's in a dance followers. group. He do battles. He's a DJ now. Yeah. Like he has a whole lot of followers. And yeah. it's like my other kids. Like they're they're connected because they do yeah. the TikToks and they yeah. do the Instagram. Especially with the whole COVID, it's kind of yeah. like they're stuck in the house. So then I make sure they got so much stuff at the house. So they're not always on phones yeah, and social yeah. media and stuff like that. You know, basketball courts, trampolines, and pools, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So that they won't be confined yeah. to that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, the reason why I say that is because I think that we don't have a... We don't have a... I think that we just doing our best right now. But I'm going to give us about 10 years. Parents, about 10 years. It's going to be out of control. Yeah. We don't have a... We don't have a, a, a hold on... Like how our parents and our parents before their parents had a hold on them, we don't have a hold on our kids like that because they're so these these influencers have them now. Like you remember, teachers used to raise these kids. Now it's people who don't never went to school, don't know nothing, just talking a bunch of propaganda. They raising the kids and they telling you, oh this and saying this and saying that, and giving examples of stuff that ain't true and don't want to look up. And a lot of kids nowadays, they, they they like instant gratification. They want stuff right away. It's like if they don't have it right then and there, if they don't get it, and that goes for information. If they see something on 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 YouTube, I mean, on uh, Facebook, everybody jumps on it as soon as they see the headline. But they don't read what it is. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Us, we are different. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I said like it's gonna be very hard moving forward not for you because your kids are older but parents who are raising kids now 
And I understand. I don't understand abortion. I would never understand abortion. And I definitely don't agree with that. That's just something I don't mm. agree with. I don't care if, if what I hate to say this, I don't care. I don't, I'm just going to say I don't care in, in, under any circumstance. Under any circumstance, I think a woman should always have a child. Damn. Period. That's just me. But I think that raising kids now is very difficult because you don't have control of your kids anymore. They're basically controlled by social media and the internet. Remember, TV is like, oh, stop listening to TV. Stop. Now you got people, regular, normal, normal people in California can contact your daughter and say, hey, your mom ain't doing enough for you. And you're like, my mom, my mom brought me this. Well, look, my mom brought me this and this and this. Mm-hmm. See, she ain't doing enough. Mm-hmm. And now, <laughs> your daughter, like, why you didn't buy me these other two yeah. things? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the thing, man. And it's very sad. It's very, very sad. Very sad. You know what I'm saying? How you, how you feel about uh, kids being wrapped up into this uh, this racial climate, though? Do you feel like, like you see how your daughter, you said your daughter, uh, she she's comfortable around white people. How you feel about them teaching kids about uh, the history of uh, certain things? Because they don't specify what exactly it is they're trying to teach kids. They're just... Mm-hmm trying to teach kids that basically that the white man, white supremacy and the white man is um, about that. I think it's for like the like all out of all my kids, I think my thirteen year old, the one that's like in the National Honor Society, like she yeah. she's the the vocal one. Yeah. My other kids they're shy they're shy, like they won't yeah. they won't say much, they'll just let it let it go. Yeah. She's the one, like she's the one. She's the combative one. Like yeah. she like when the whole like stuff with Trump and yeah. um like all that stuff going on, she watching it throughout the house. Like yeah. I don't believe that. We be telling her like you got to be quiet. Like yeah. you know what I mean. Like <laughs> she's the one that if she's yeah. on like a chat with her friends and one starts saying something, she'll put them in her place. Yeah. And she's the one in school saying stuff. You know what I mean. Like she. So so no she, she so she's so what is she what is she doing? Is she uh is she repping? What's okay? So what side is she repping? Is she rapping people, uh, Black Lives Matter, or, or All Lives Matter? And I don't want to say it like it's wrong to yeah, represent yeah, All Lives yeah. Matter, because I don't believe it is. I think that, like, I like the All Lives Matter, but when it's specifically about black people, yeah. they're telling you that our lives matter too. So they're yeah. not understanding that, we not saying that your yeah. life don't matter, but right now we're talking about us. Let us have a yeah, moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's how um, my 13-year-old feels. She's um, the Black Lives Matter, and she, she hates when people say the all lives matter, matter because she's the one that says like we're talking about us like we're the one getting shot at we're the ones yeah. who's this we're the ones this 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 you know what I mean so yeah. she she definitely has a, a strong mind and yeah, yeah. Uh, even like with that whole thing with Black Lives Matter All Lives Matter and all that stuff like with me here's the thing man and a, a lot of people I know probably get some shit for this but whatever I don't support Black Lives Matter the organization and I say that I'm very vocal about that because the organization clearly doesn't care about black people. They care about making money. But they know that they got foot soldiers. You, me, mm-hmm. your daughter, mm-hmm. everybody. It's gonna it's a hyper sensitive nation we live in. And <clears throat> when someone says something about Black Lives Matter, of course you're gonna get people because that is that's reactionary. If mm-hmm. you say Black Lives Matter, right? And I'm a white person. I'm gonna say, of course, Black Lives Matter. White Lives Matter too. And you're gonna say, what? That's racist. Why would you say that? You know what I'm saying? See, but I wouldn't say that. No, no, like, you're not. The, not understand. you. Yeah, but not like you. This person in but general. people yeah. Yeah. in general. That's what they say mm-hmm. because they they created this narrative that if you go against anything that's supporting Black people, not even going against, mm-hmm. if you say. Because you can say all lives matter and not go against because when you say all lives matter, that means that you're including black people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. But when you said, you just said that most people said, well, can we just have a moment? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We have our moment. Mm-hmm. And I think people look at that like, well, that's disrespectful to just say that you're, that you're, your, your color or your skin color or your people matter. But they're not looking at it from the perspective mm-hmm. of yeah. of awareness. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like this is just for awareness. Black Lives Matter is for awareness. 
Now the messaging is is beautiful because it's the truth. Yeah. The organization not so much, but the yeah. me- the messaging is beautiful. So I think that when they when people say Black Lives Matter and you say All Lives Matter, black 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 people take that disrespectful. But I think that if black people looked at it from the other side and said, well, you know what? I'll put it to you like this. I got into this big thing with my cousin, right? He said, black lives matter, right? And I said, all black lives matter. And he said, why you, you, why, do, why does it have to be that? Isn't it implying when I say black lives matter that? I said, well, no, because I feel like with the organization, they don't care about all black people. So they specifically say Black Lives Matter because if you're conservative or if you're Candace Owens, if you support Trump or if you mm-hmm. people who voted for Trump, they don't give a shit about you. They don't care. Mm-hmm. It was a, a cop, black cop got shot in the head. They didn't care. There was a couple, couple of people who got killed during the, the, the BLM protests. Mm-hmm. They didn't care. Mm-hmm. Nobody said anything. But those were black people too. Then you, then you have them literally coming out saying, if you stand on the other side, you're the enemy. But this is what I'm saying. So if Black Lives Matter, how is it that Black Lives Matter if I have a disagreement with you that I my life that. doesn't matter? I need that. I need you should that. be able to. You should be able to have a disagreement. You know what I mean, that's what makes this nation yeah, to me. To yeah, you could agree yeah. to disagree. Mm-hmm. Like you say, well, I don't like Trump. And people say, I don't like Trump. Uh, uh, I love Trump. And you got black people who believe that they only like like. You got black people who believe that some people only like Trump because they're revolting against black people. That's not why. No. That's a, no, that's not. That's not why I like Trump. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's reasons why. I didn't mm-hmm. think. Don't, don't put, so, but the point I'm making is when you have uh, situations like that, they basically pin you against each other. And they're still pinning us against each other, mm-hmm. even with Black Lives Matter. Because if you don't support Black Lives Matter, but if you're black... And you don't support Black Lives Matter organization. People look at it like you're a race traitor. It's like, come on. But to me, like, I'm, I'm biased because, like, what I always tell my children, like, yeah. put the sh- like, like, put the shoes on the other foot. Like, yeah. if that was done to you, would you be okay with that? And yeah. I tell them that all the time when it comes to them doing stuff to each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, oh, that's mine. Or can I wear that? You like, they be like, no. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like the whole like cattiness that goes on. Yeah. I be like, put the, the shoe on the other foot. And that's how I feel when it comes to the whole um, Black Lives Matter stuff because I would understand why white people would say white lives matter if it was mm. a situation going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? If yeah, they're yeah. constantly getting yeah. attacked yeah. and me as a black person, I have feelings. Yeah. And I'm like, why are they doing that to white people? So if yeah. they come up with this whole organization like, okay, white lives matter. I won't yeah. understand why. Yeah. And I would be cool with it because yeah. y'all lives do matter. But I wouldn't say, oh, black lives matter too. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I will understand why because what's yeah. going on. I, we just didn't come out the blue saying it. You know what yeah. I mean? So well, people, I understand. People, no, I, and I understand where that come from. People associate. See, the problem is people associate good groups with bad groups. So you got... When you say Black Lives Matter and somebody said White Lives Matter, they automatically say that you're your Klansman. Mm-hmm. If you say White Lives Matter, you have never been a Klansman in your life. Mm-hmm. If you say Black Lives Matter, they they say automatically they say, oh well, you must support uh you must support black people or the black militia or mm-hmm. the p- mm-hmm. Black Panthers or whatever. They associate they they put people into these categories of identity politics and it's messed up because now they're dragging children into it. Yep, sure you know what I'm saying and. That with their, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm all for I'm all for teaching people history. Mm-hmm. But the major problem what I have teaching people history or critical race theory or whatever they want to call it is they never have any solutions. That it only lets me know that when they want to teach these things to these kids, they want kids to they want to breed people to hate each other because. What's the point of telling somebody about something if you don't have a solution or somewhat of a solution mm-hmm. for it? If, mm-hmm. I, if I have a, if me and you have an argument about something and we both go our separate ways and we never talk again, I'm going to feel some type of way because why was we arguing? Mm-hmm. What caused it? Mm-hmm. And how can we fix it? That's yeah. what it's about. Yeah. Most of the time you get these, these politicians and these people who want to teach this stuff to your kids, your kids, whoever else kids, they want to teach this hate because they know that children nowadays, inflammation is like that. It yep, moves so yep, fast. Yep. And children yep. nowadays don't listen to that bullshit. 
they hang with their white and black friends and they don't look at yeah. color no more. Yeah. It's like, so what? Uh, they look at it literally, young niggas, I picked up some young niggas and they said, man, I don't give a fuck about that shit. That shit is in the past. Over with. I don't yeah. care about, about that, yeah. what happened years ago. But you got people who, like older old heads like us, who want to reopen the wounds, Pete. like, mm-hmm. yeah, you better care about it because white people are racist. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, well, all my friends are white and they're yeah, not they racist. Too. And yeah. I just was spending the night over over my boy house and mm-hmm. his mom cooked dinner and, and she looked at me like I'm her son. Mm-hmm. And you got, that's the thing. And that's why I say, like, with, with, with your kids growing up, it's good that they're in tune and it's good that you teach your kids to agree to disagree because now, now parents... They're teaching their kids, and it's not nothing against what you said, but they're teaching their kids that every black person is getting shot by the cops. Mm-hmm. And it's not that's not true. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, don't get me wrong. There's some, they're, cops do some nutty shit, and they, they didn't kill a lot of black people. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't want to be like, oh, well, they kill a lot of white people too, because that's, that's stupid. I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say that they kill a lot of black people, so it's good to have awareness and good to bring it up. But the sad part is, we're not teaching our kids not to defend the criminal. We're teaching our kids to uh, uh, just look at the police officers and the police officers, what they did. And some of these people that got shot, not all of them, a good percentage of them that got killed, was doing some, some fuck shit. My children say that all the time. Like, why? Well, why was you doing that? Like, why didn't you just sit there and just show them your license, show them your registration? Like, my kids say that all the time, so they are so not... Oh my God! They shot yeah, you. Know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Like they feel bad about the situation. Yeah. But when they actually see the situation, read the situation, understand the situation, yeah. they're like, "Well, you kind of put yourself in that predicament to, yeah. even though a cop shouldn't, you know what I yeah. mean? They should have tased first, you know, whatever that case may be, that they lost their life. But my kids don't. They don't do the. Oh my God! They just shot another black person. Yeah. That they look at it, read, yeah. read into it first, and that's how you should. We, be. In our house, we just be like. Well, why would they do that? And I tell them, you know, I have two boys. So yeah. my son's 12, my other son's 22. So it's kind of yeah. like my 22 year old talks to my 12 year old. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. some things you don't do. And my 22 year old, he's very light spoken. Yeah. You have to be like, what you say? Yeah. What you say? <laughs> I'm like, when you're talking to a police officer, like look at him in his eyes, like yeah. talk loudly, like pronounce yeah. your words. Like yeah. he's very bashful. So it's kind of like, if mm-hmm. they don't hear you, yeah. it can turn into attitude. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you got to do stuff that you need to do. Don't be all like, well, why are you pulling me? Like, you don't got to yeah, be crazy. Yeah. You know that, what I mean? And, you don't have that, to be. That's the, and that's the, that's the mentality that they have put upon a lot of these young black men. They make them feel like the police, and don't get me wrong, again, I'm going to say this again. A lot of police officers are jokes. Mm-hmm. They do a lot of fuck mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. But you cannot make children out to, to believe that the police is the enemy. Because if you make them out to believe the police is the enemy, what do they do? They get combative. Yeah. That's what kids yeah. do. Yeah. That's what these young black men do. They get so combative and they just do things and the police react. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that police don't. Because there are some cops out there who just do things just yeah. crazy. Yeah. But you have some people out there. And again... Again, it's it's very sad the situation we live in. It's very sad. It's very sad, and I, and I hope that uh things get better. Mm-hmm. But you know, I mean, so your kids, your, your kids, you basically taught your kids how to uh, handle situations. That's good. Yeah, they know how to handle situations because like they used to be around like police officers yeah. and things like that a lot because when I was an EMT, yeah. they was always at. You know what I mean? They was always yeah. there. Like they met them. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. They know both sides of it. They know what can happen if things go left, and they know that not all cops are bad. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's like they're in the middle, so they kind of yeah. know what to do. Like, they're not disrespectful kids anyway, so yeah. they wouldn't come off crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a lot of them, they would be they would be scared to, if they wanted to come off crazy. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. They, they want to come yeah. home. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. kind of like... It's kind of like the, the hate that I put on them to make yeah. them... You know what I mean? You got to... You gotta, fix that because I can get my kids killed. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the like, thing. That's the thing. You seen, did you see that video of the uh, other lady? <laughs> Her kids was doing a TikTok video and they was doing a song. They was cursing and she came in and beat them. No. You didn't see that? No. Oh, you don't really know that. I don't really watch TikTok stuff. You don't really know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Oh, man. It was crazy. 
She came and whooped him, and she was cursing. She said, uh, they, they did a song, and they was saying, the song was like, y'all niggas be late as fuck. And it was just like, and the mom came in, and she's like, uh, you, uh, you motherfuckers gonna be cursing, uh, cursing all this fucking cursing in my house. And I'm saying, this is where they get it from. Oh, wow. She beating her with a stench <laughs> on wow. camera. Mm. That's like, why do parents do that? Why do parents beat their kids on camera? I was saying this is just one guy, right? They do, parents do some of the craziest things, and they think that that's, I don't know if they're jealous of their kids or anything, but this one guy, he took his son's PlayStation and ran it over him in a car because he said that his son was watching YouTube in the morning and his son said he said his son was smart he said didn't I tell you not to watch YouTube he's like I was watching it on my phone you said not to watch it you said why not to watch it on PlayStation mm, mm, mm. <laughs> that's what he said he still broke it mm. so I'm in my, my mind I'm thinking you nigga you wanted to break that PlayStation you, you was looking for a reason like a reason. <laughs> you know what I'm saying you was waiting <laughs> Nigga, you was waiting. Yeah. Don't sit here and try to act like, like, like you're doing something good. Mm-hmm. But how does that... See, I think a lot of parents got to understand. Children are much more sensitive than we were. We were growing up. And they love these items. And you don't supposed to love stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I love my computer. Yeah. See, if you were to take it and smash it right now, I'd probably be hurt. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how parents got to understand. He has that. He had a, 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 a charger. Nice, souped-up charger. Mm-hmm. He did, what if he did something his wife didn't like and she bust his windows, flattened his tires, and ran her car? How would he feel? He loved his car. I'm sure he do. But the point I'm making is, this is what a lot of these parents do. They think that showing the world that they're a good parent by, mm-hmm. by demeaning or, or doing things that really hurts their child, that's not, that doesn't yeah. make you a good yeah, parent. Like, for real, it makes you look stupid. Mm-hmm. And he looked dumb. He ran the PlayStation over and... Because he was watching YouTube. And he got bad grades. That's your fault. Mm-hmm. That's not his fault. Mm-hmm. How about just take it from him and say, hey, listen, we're going to work on your grades. And when you get your grades up, we're gonna, yep, I'm going to give it I back to you. That's what I He had his stuff taken from, like, middle to school year. And just got it back, like, last week. Like, But I'm the soft mom. I get you... stuff back too quick. You know what I mean? Because I, 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 my son, he's just, he's so sweet. And like, if you look at him, he's like about... a little teddy bear. Uh, and it's like, and he's just so nice and yeah. polite, making sure everybody's okay. Always yeah. asking somebody, like, are, are they okay? Do they yeah. need anything? Like but he, he just, but again, he, like the whole homeschooling, like he wasn't feeling it. Like well, he, like, it's hard. Homeschool is hard. So he was like, he wasn't getting bad grades. His yeah. grades was just like going down. Like yeah. the teacher was like, oh, um, Mark needs to uh, be on Zoom and pay attention. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just little stuff. So I'm like, well, I have to take this stuff away. Like I have to, I have to do this. And he's like, I understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of like, now, now I feel bad. <laughs> yeah. And he just be walking around the house all moping and sad. And it's just like, it's not the crazy. Well, I don't care about that teacher. They're yeah. picking on me. He's not that yeah. type. Like he knows that. He just be like, yeah. mom, just so you know, I'm not going to college. That don't and work. <laughs> I won't say this to the kids. That don't work no more. The teachers picking on me don't mm-hmm, work anymore. Mm-hmm. But some parents that do though. Some yeah. parents be like, I'm calling them off school right now. Yeah. What do you mean they picking on you? Yeah. You be like, Yeah, she was picking on me. She was telling me I had mm-hmm. to do my schoolwork. And you'd be like, Yeah, she should be telling you that stuff. Mm-hmm. Next thing yeah. you know, the teacher ain't really picking. So I understand that though. I understand that. That and your child is a good child. I understand. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying like a lot of times you could work with your kids. It's just how you do it. And if you have good children that listen to you, mm-hmm. it's easy for you to work with them. I think that what that man did, he kind of showed his son that basically when he gets older, he's going to probably do the same thing to his kids. Or, or he's going to hate total, his dad. Or maybe the total opposite. Because, you know, people who have, like, parents who's on drugs, yeah. sometimes they on drugs. Yeah. And sometimes they're, like, the total opposite. That's what I'm saying. Or, or he's going to hate his dad and be like, I hated my dad. Mm-hmm. That motherfucker broke my PlayStation. Like, I would never do that. I would yeah. never do that to my kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I, it's certain things. My dad, my dad was a good dad. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't a bad kid. I think yeah. he only beat me one time in my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I had, I had, uh... <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to tell you the story real quick. So, so I had, uh... 
I was, uh, my, my, my father left me home by myself. I was like seven, 16, 16, I was 16. And he left me home by myself. He went to work, he was working for a company called Conrail. You know what that is, yeah, a train a company? Train, mm -hmm. Yeah, so he was a conductor. And his wife was a nurse. So she uh, was, she worked in Jersey City and she was never home. So when I got out, out of school, mm -hmm. I didn't have no video games. I didn't have nothing. So what I used to do was I used to prank call people. Oh, my God. <laughs> you only do that at parties. So <laughs> it's not call. fun if you do it by yourself. Oh, so it's because at the time, right, you could just dial numbers back then, and it'll, it'll connect you to anybody Somebody in the world, right? right? <laughs> so I used to just dial the numbers like, do, 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 do. Now, I used to say stupid shit like, honey, nut Cheerios, then hang up the phone. <laughs> No. Yo, I swear <laughs> to God, right? I used to do, I used to do crazy shit. Like, uh, I'd be like, yeah, I'm standing right across the street, looking at you. Lady be like, what? She like, you ain't looking at me. I'd be like, yes, I am. I'm looking right at you. She like, oh, this is a joke, rag. You ain't looking at me. I'm like, yes, I am. Look, I can see you right here. You got a wig on your head. She like, boy, I ain't got a wig on my head. My head, my head, my head real. I ain't got a wig on my head. I'm like, yes, you do. Like, yo, I'm doing some of the nuttiest <laughs> shit ever, right? <laughs> So my father, right, he uh, he came and got me from Jersey City. I went to visit my mom, so he came and got me from Jersey City. And I wanted this game called Wizard and Warriors, right, mm -hmm. for Nintendo. And uh, he was like, yeah, he said, uh, I kept telling him, I kept telling him, like, you know how your kids was hinting, like, oh, you know that new mm -hmm. game come out? So I was like mm -hmm. that with my dad, right? I was like, yeah, you uh, so you know the Wizard and Warriors come out, right? He like, oh, he said, yeah, I got your Wizard and Warriors. I was like, you got it? He like, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Don't you uh, worry about that. So I get all the way to the house, right? We lived all the way, so he picked me up from Jersey City. So we get all the way to North, right? So we walk in the house, right? He was like, I'm going to go upstairs and get your game, and you stay right here. So I'm in the kitchen, right? And I got my back turned, right? I swear to God, all I seen was the floor, then the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga flipped me over. Oh my God. Yo, yo, what? he flipped me over, right? And he flipped me over the counter onto the top of the, like, I could have died. Like, he like, he took my hoodie and he grabbed my hoodie and he swept me. Like, cause my father used to, he used to uh, practice martial arts. He swept me and I went in the air. Like, and I was like, I didn't even know I was, I didn't know I was being flipped until I hit the floor. I said, like, what the fuck just happened? Like, yo. <laughs> he was like, look at this phone. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like traumatized. Because I was like, because he it came out of nowhere. Like, I'm standing there and I'm like, yeah, I'm getting the game. And I'm like this. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. just like that. Mm. And mm. he was like, mm. uh, you got this. Uh, look at this phone bill. Phone bill was $1,200. And back then, $1,200 was like a million dollars. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. So that $1,200, boy, I tell you, I was like, oh, man. So, of course, but that's the crazy part about it, man. Like, it's different nowadays. Like, we live in this different times, so I understand. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. That's that. Wow. <laughs> so, but my father was always the type of person who sat back and talked. And I guess he got fed up mm -hmm. and was like, Oh, this motherfucker think I'm playing with yeah. him. He think he won't. Yeah. I won't. Because he never put his hands on me. Mm -hmm. My father never, ever, ever put his hands on me. Okay. Ever. My mom, my mom used to beat me. But my father, nah, never. That was the first time. And I'm going to be honest with you, it made me a better man because after he did it, he showed me what I did wrong. And he told me that I can't do stuff like that. And then I just got better at school. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, he knocked the demon out. Yeah. Flip the demon out, yeah. like yeah. for real, like, and it was just I was just a better person after mm -hmm. that. So I, you know what I mean. So that's what I'm saying. Like, as long as you show your kids and you walk with your kids every step of the way, if that man would have said, "Hey, listen, you can't watch YouTube," you know, I don't know if the boy's name was Carl, like Carl, mm -hmm. you can't watch YouTube. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna take your phone. I'm gonna take your thing until you get your grades up. If you need any help with this? Matter of fact, not if you need help. I'm gonna help you with your work, and mm -hmm. we're gonna do it together. Mm -hmm. That's what a real parent does. Mm -hmm. And what happens is now the child sees that his dad is in tune with his life 
And that YouTube might not even be that serious to them no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do your, do your kids play any sports? Yeah. Um, They all play sports. Um, Right now, um, my daughter that's getting ready to be 17, she's going to be a senior. Yeah. So she's in two AAU um, basketball yeah. teams. One's for um, a place in Berlin called Peak Skills. Yeah. And the other one is um, Rutgers and Camden. So I'm... Um, all sports mom and my youngest son yeah. he played basketball he doing the cheerleader too cheerleading yeah. she's trying out uh yeah. in the next few days she got to send the videos of her because now they're all like their audition and yeah. the tryouts is on on camera so you can't yeah. you're not going to be a bunch of girls trying out and they're yeah. like you 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 it's kind of like you got to send your stuff in and they'll let you know so that's how it is for yeah. her school now at overbrook that she's starting um high school yeah but sports mom Sports oh, mom man. all the way, and I am that parent. I got my God! Stop! Just oh, last night. <laughs> Just last night. <laughs> like, get off her! Oh my God! Just Not last me. Night, I am that parent. <laughs> I was never that parent. I am that I parent. Mm. I was a sport. I was. I was an extremely good basketball player. Mm. But I mean, I played basketball, but nah, I'm good. I don't. I, don't, I guess I'm different. I'm not one of the. I mean, I support. But I'm not one of those parents like that. So like, Go get them. Yeah, get them. I'm yeah. so fun. <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm just not that guy. I'm just not. Oh, you did good. That Everybody was good. I know who I am. And I'll be like, all right, when I get to this game, don't make me mad. Don't do nothing dumb. I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to watch it. I'm going to sit here. I ain't yelling. Yeah. I ain't screaming first play. I'm yeah. yelling. Like, what you do that for? Like, <laughs> Hey, Mama, what you said? Like, well, all right, yeah. I'm going to sit here. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. I can't. I can't. I just can't. Like, I'm the making shirts and having her number on my back. And, yeah, yeah like, the, the black marks for my son when he plays football. Like You do that? I'm Bro. <laughs> yeah, I have the black eyes. Like, I'm Yo, in you it. out of I, control. I am in it. You, put, in you it. put black eyes on? I, oh, my God. I, I thought you said you put it on your son. No, on me and on him. Oh I have the black, God. the blue black marker pencil crayon thing. <laughs> Yo, I'm in it. I'm for real? In it. I'm in I can't, it. no. I can't I'll be in it. it. I can't. I can't. I'll be in it. Uh, I'm not. I can't. I, I, I'm just not that guy. I'm sorry. I can't. I mean, I'm in it. my son doesn't play sports. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, he never played sports. No, he never picked the basketball up in his life. Tall as did, hell. You probably would. See, I played all sports. Like, I yeah. did all of it. So, it's yeah. kind of like, I don't know if it was like hereditary, but. Yeah. You play all sports. Right. You can play no football. Get out of here. I would. I did like the senior night thing yeah. when the, uh, the, like they switch roles. You run, yep, yep, run fast. Yep, yep, I was in track. You could not run fast. I can't. I can't. You crazy? Can you see these long legs, man? Yo, how fast you running? I'm Back in the day, you could run fast. Why are you talking about now? Yeah. Oh no! You could no, run no, fast no, on that no, wood. No. And wait for the bases. <laughs> I was out, yo. Yo, you used to be out. out. You had face to swing at you. You'd be <laughs> dipping like a matrix. So I'd be like, yo, yeah, she's out. dipping. You used to I be dipping out. the punches yeah. like. I'd be uh, what's that, what's that dude that? name? Uh, mm-hmm. What was the boy name? What was the boy name? Uh, what was his name? The one you was dipping from. Young boy. That's the one that made boy. me get the, uh, the, yeah, uh, the yeah, surgery. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. your arm up. Yeah, what's his yeah, name? Oh my God. I don't want to say his name. Okay, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Copy that shit. Yeah, right. right? Come after me, right? Make me really make me famous. Right, right. Nah, yeah, he uh, he swung on you all crazy. You dipping like, uh, uh-uh, mm-hmm. nigga, move. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's like, yo, that my nigga last day there. Mm, Try to kill me. Yo, but those are some crazy days. Ooh, Them days. I'm, I'm happy. Yo, I'm so happy. I'm out of there. I don't believe you are. Like that's. I mean, yo, everything. I seen this girl yesterday. She was like, uh. She was like, yo, oh my God, I haven't seen you in a What happened? What they said? People said you got fired. I said, mm-hmm. I didn't get fired. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? So mm-hmm. I said, I'm retired. I left. Mm-hmm. She was like, oh shit. Damn, it's so good to see you. I don't know. I said, how is it? How is it now? She said, it's 10 times worse. They sent me a letter to come back. Really? I said, hell no. If they sent me a letter, I think I might. What? I think I might. I need to fight now. <laughs> I'm, t- I think I'm too nice. Everybody, they was just so mean to me. I was just so nice. I don't know, girls are jealousy. I gotta tell you something in your ear. And yeah, I go yeah. closer and they spit on me. <laughs> or it hit me. The one dude, like, he's the Pika patient, he like ripped yeah. my earring out and like ate it in like 2.2. I was like, yeah. oh my God. But they all be like, yeah. And I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> Such a dummy, yo. Like, 
Yo, I seen people do. Yo, some of them girls is coming in like, yeah, that's my friend. That's my. I be like, that nigga ain't your friend. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, mm-hmm. that's my friend. That's my friend. He ain't gonna let nothing happen to me, man. See, they, they, she ain't come to work one day, and he was. She was supposed to come and bring him like something, something. a cake or uh-huh. something. She came in the next day, and nigga threw a p- cup of piss in her face. <laughs> oh like, oh, why wasn't you here yesterday? She's like, oh, I'm called down. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, <laughs> you come when I tell you to come in. <laughs> like, yo, oh, I'll be yeah. like, yo, I'll be looking like, because you know you can't, if you see it, you got to report it. So I will look like with the side eye and right. turn straight, like, uh, they be like, oh, we seen you on camera looking. No, you I didn't. See I ain't see shit. Mm, like, like, for real. Like, <laughs> it, yo, that place was nuts. Mm. Like, I tell you, That's man. Crazy. Psychiatric hospitals, That's crazy, man. Right? I don't know, man. Crazy. It is what it is, but That's crazy. so you still bougie? What was the last thing you bought that was expensive? I got to know this because I well, remember one time you told me you bought a bag that was ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh my! But but this was only this was the last thing I bought. This is uh, it's not really put it up against the camera. So yeah, it's not really expensive, <laughs> but it's kind of hard to get. It's the um the Telfar um purse. And I have like seven of them, but this is the most recent one. Yeah, it was like two fifty ish, but that's not a $250. lot. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, that's not a lot, and it's hard to get. Yeah. So that's the that's the the issue. Yeah. But yeah, no. You used to make cake. Yeah. You was a, a mannequin model. <laughs> yo, that's how does true. yo how does one become a mannequin <laughs> model? You stand in a window for eight hours or five hours and get paid fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. Then you go to another one and do the same thing, yeah. like three thousand yeah. dollars a day. Yeah, it was for Victoria's Secret when That's their grand not, opening. Now you know stuff. they got some money if they paying you mm-hmm. fifteen hundred dollars a day. Yeah. You know they got some money. It's pretty dope. <laughs> they don't even have to use you. They could use a mannequin for free, they did, but yeah. they're like, you know what? No, we want real. But it was just for like the like the grand opening, so they yeah. wanted an extra. Yeah. Like, oh, mom, she just moved. Like, and then you change it. And then you... Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, Remember so. you told me, you was like, yeah, I'm about to go down to Atlanta and make some money and call Stan and be a, a yeah. model. I said, wait, what? Yeah, I'm going to stand here and get paid. I said, wait, so you don't be my, no, I'm a mannequin model. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yo, like, you a mannequin that? model? <laughs> yo, I want to be a mannequin model. I got to get my shit right, though. I'm all right. Yeah, man. You know what it is. Hey, soldier talk. Mm-hmm. You know what it is. Hey, Kinda. I'm 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 half Asian today. And you, uh, how much is that hat? Yeah, exactly. It's just a hat. <laughs> hey, man, it was good talking it's to you. Me too. You know what I mean? It's good talking to you. Great episode. Glad to see you as usual. You, you too. Know. You too. My good friend. Yes. You know what I mean. <laughs> 